We have the mouth-watering prospect of a big Springbok All Blacks test out in Wellington, New Zealand this weekend. And in the build-up to it, we've uh, been taking a look at some of the highlights from that big match that the, the Springboks won last year out there. And figured today on the show seems like a pretty good time to look, take a look back at our own highlights. Indeed, that's right. Some great names and faces have graced the stage with us. And we're going to be taking a look at the best moments over the past two seasons. Can you believe it? Congratulations. And, yeah, and if you are watching us on Facebook and you can't watch the whole show here, make sure you tune in to Super Sport 1 tonight at 7.30 or of course we're always on Catch Up or on YouTube. That's right. We want you to have your say though. Please tag us at Super Sport TV with the hashtag SSRugby and let us know what your favourite moments of uh, our show have been. Yeah, two seasons. Wow, time really does fly. Al, you have, you know, spoken to some incredible players, um, some of the best players. We looking at Andre Pollard, Jesse Creel, Cecil Africa. I mean, how has how has the two seasons rolled by? I mean, your favorites. Can I ask you? Do you have any favorites? I think that I had favorite moments from a lot of them. Right. Um, I think it was just really cool the way the players came in and opened up because as soon as you start speaking to them about their personal lives and their journeys to, to this point, it's like you're kind of accessing a, a, a different level of, of, them. of their personality. And a guy like Louis de Jager, um, the thing that I've learned about him over the years is that he's actually an incredibly funny person. Yeah. But it's very hard for people to read that based on the way he plays rugby, which is very serious. Yes, right. And it was so good having him here and seeing that sense of humor, but also hearing him speaking very earnestly about the fact that he wants to coach one day and that you know you are awakened to the fact that these guys have second careers waiting for them and, yeah. and there's there's so much more to their journey than what we're imagining for them just right here and now absolutely well you know with the show we do a lot of preparation before we make sure that we do the research and we um, you know put in the hours before they they come over but has any of the interviews not gone the way you had planned and prepped well, I think that um, the Cecil Africa one, he gave us a lot more than I anticipated. Right. Um, I had a conversation with him before we went on air, um, off camera and in makeup, and we went outside and, and, and got something to eat. And he, he told me a lot of, you know, kind of personal stuff, and I didn't anticipate that to also come out on air. But I do think that it kind of, it set the tone for the, the, the eventual conversation we had out here, which was, so heartwarming yeah. and I think it's so powerful when players go and, and stand in their truth and go this has been how tough it has been for me yeah. Achieva Daimani being another one yeah, and I think what such a great inspiration for anyone out there even if you're not yeah. an athlete yeah. yeah even if you're not an athlete just if you're facing a challenge in life there's so much to take from a lot of their stories absolutely actually one of the interviews that made me tear up was Liesl mm. uh, who had such a phenomenal mm. story mm. where you know he didn't really have enough food and oh man it was it's really deep and some incredible inspirational stories like you said. Okay, how about games? We play a lot of games on this show. Some of them are fantastic. Some of them, I mean, I have witnessed, have gone very pear-shaped. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun. Which of, your, or which of them have been your favorite and most memorable? Take that as a positive or negative. Yeah, it's actually been interesting how um, some of the guys have a practice run. So we test to make sure that the camera positions are fine and that the guys actually know what the challenge is. Yeah. Sometimes just so that we're sure that it's going to work once we're live and sometimes it's still some, you know, has a, a challenge or two. Sure. But one or two of them have given their challenges a go before we went live. Andre Pollard with the steady hand challenge and I think Philip Snyman with the cups. And both of them did really well off air. And then as soon as the cameras are on, suddenly the pressure changes the, the, the performance and that is such a... Um, it's such a powerful thing to also realize that these guys do feel pressure, even though we think that they don't. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I suppose big match mentality happens on the field, but maybe not exactly in the studio in front of all these cameras. Right now, though, we're going to take a look at a quick insert that we put together of our favorite moments with some of our favorite players. What's your wife's favorite snack? I am. Your 
<laughs> I'm to, on a serious note now, um, it's popcorn. <laughs> Congratulations on 157 caps, man. To say you are a beast is an understatement. I don't even know what you call a beast with stamina, my friend, because beast has power, but a beast with stamina is something new. It's something only you can do. So congratulations, my friend. 157 caps. We are very proud, Baba. Very, very proud. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. We'll send that to you. <laughs> wow. Trip the Noah, man. I'm such a fan. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. For me, the reason why I'm, I'm playing rugby is, is to make sure that I could provide for my, for, for my family and the, the generation coming after me. I have so much respect for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, just to just the, the stuff that I learn in, in, in rugby that I can also imply in, in life and also maybe teach my kids one day. Uh, be disciplined, don't do the stuff that I did when, when I was a child. But uh, if I knew that the stuff now that I that I that I if I knew the stuff now way back then then I, I would have done it differently. But what's saying that it then I wouldn't have become the person I am today. Catch all the Commonwealth Games Rugby Sevens. Only on Supersport 1. Catch all the Commonwealth Games Rugby 7s only on Supersport 1. Good luck boys. Looking forward to see you hit the hit the pit hit the pit 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 That was fine. Someone ruined it for me. Catch all the Commonwealth Games Rugby 7s only on Supersport 1. Good luck boys, look forward to seeing you at the pitch. Cheers. I shouldn't say cheers. Can you cut our cheers? You can cut our cheers. Begin with your norm. Ah, I forgot. Begin with your norm. Can you just put it in and the... She didn't brief me. I don't know, I, I need an iPad. Can I get an iPad? Give me an iPad. Hi, I'm Chris Dry. Catch all the Commonwealth Games action only on Super Sport 1. Good luck boys. Hi, I'm Chris Dry. Catch all the Commonwealth Games action only on Supersport. Good luck, boys. Make us proud. <laughs> and thanks to my girlfriend for letting me come out for the day. <laughs> Was that it? Right, so you see, it's not easy what we do here, right? I mean, it, it takes a little bit of talent, guys, just a little bit. I mean, you've had some experience with Chris Dry, and mm. he was fantastic, as you've told me, right? Tell yeah. us about the experience you had with him in Cape Town. So at the Cape Town Sevens at the end of 2018, what mm. we did was we worked quite closely with both Chris and um, with Ruan now. Yeah. And we, we had so much fun with both of them because when they're here in the studio, they're a little more nervous. Yeah, but as soon as you're out at the stadium, that's their domain. Right. And I did loads of um, digital content for the Supersport.com website right. with Chris Dry, and he was such a good analyst of the match, you know, and what and eloquent, happening. right? <laughs> really good. And we we put Ruan Nell in the in the hot seat. We took him outside to the fans, mm -hmm. and we made him interview fans and ask them about how badly this Ruan Nell player has been playing to see how many of them it was would realise it's him. Go check. It's on Supersport. Uh, YouTube, I'm sure it's somewhere in there. That's and it's great. it's literally one of my favorite moments is how the Sevens players mm -hmm. can so easily set their ego aside and just kind of move that's into so any fun. role you want them oh, to. Oh, that's so awesome. So good. Shout out to you, Ronel, if you're watching. But now moving on from rugby players to personalities because we interview all types here on In Touch. You've had some very interesting experiences. I loved Glenn. Oh my goodness, Glenn the comedian. Shout out to him. You had some really good moments in there. Tell me about the experience, impressions of Glenn. You've obviously, he's interviewed you on yes. his show yes. and then he came into your little domain. Tell us about that. So it helps when you have a comedian because with players, um, promoting themselves isn't isn't what they are used to. They're used to forming part of a great big team mm -hmm. and being part of the whole. Whereas comedians are so happy to just come out here and you know serve and talk. Yeah, yeah, 
And um, I think the nice thing with Glenn was I knew that if I gave him a bit of heat, he would respond to that really nicely. Oh, and, oh, and he did. And Sivan Gesi was similar. Um, Rikas Radio Raps, when Ooh. we had him on last year, was similar. And so it's, it's really fun sometimes meeting rugby fans who love the sport dearly, mm -hmm. uh, but who also has a bit of a performing side to them, because yeah. then you can really push it a bit. Indeed, indeed. How about Rachel? I mean, we the only female on the show as an interviewee, which kind of blew my mind. Well, we did have a, a, a rugby player in here recently as well. Oh, of course, the, uh, yes. The women's rugby players. Of course, seven but, play, yes. yes, but last year we had Rachel Kulisi shortly after Sia Kulisi was appointed captain of the Springboks. That's right. And I think that because she is someone who is very prominent on social media and often very talked, spoken about, mm. and people only know her from her Instagram and her Twitter presence, it's so important to sometimes just Show, show the average South African that she's also human. And peel the layers. And peel the, the layers. media the layers. Yeah, yeah, because I think that your energy on social media is often very strong. Mm. And as soon as you have someone sitting down just chatting, you realize that they're actually just very human. Indeed. Very inhuman indeed. Well, we actually have a few little clips of them on the show. So if you don't remember or haven't seen it, let's take a quick look. His sister and his brother also living in your household. Mm. Um, I'm sure they must be bursting with pride. So proud. So when Sia told me on Sunday, because he found out on Sunday, um, I was so excited and I told him, I was like, you need to phone your dad and tell your dad and stuff. He's like, you can't tell anyone. Like, you need to be quiet about it. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, but I told Liema, his brother, because Pelo and Nick knew, so I felt like he needed to know as well, because he's at hostel in PE. And um, he was so proud. It was like the sweetest, sweetest moment. And he sent Sia a message and Sia sent it to me as well. It was the sweetest message. And uh, I'm just, it's so exciting that they can be a part of it and, you know, that they're old enough to understand what's going yeah. on. So it's, it's I was beautiful. gonna say, I think that's a nice thing for Nick. It's just dad is doing something cool somewhere out there. He asks me every day, he says, Mama, is Dada still captain? Is Dada still captain of the Springboks today? Yesterday. Yes, still today. <laughs> but now he's still. Yeah. We've now been seeing that promo I mean, I think I've seen your, more, your face more than any rugby player so far in 2019. Well, you need to stop stalking me on Instagram. But yes. I'll tell you what the thing is, is that that was one of the funnest things I've ever done, but also one of the hardest things I've ever done. I mean, it all looks very fun in games when you're looking at the blooper reel there. Mm -hmm. But you must remember that these guys are paid to play rugby, yes. not to act. Yes. So now there I am, just like a hamster on a wheel, trying to get all the jokes in, and I'm telling Eben, saying to him, you know, are you going to be captain this year? Because we all know what happened last time you were captain. And then he was milliseconds away from from ripping my entire face off of my thing, and then and then and then throwing it out the window. Wow! Wow! Look Why at that. did that have to happen? Do you uh, do you like that? No. What do you mean? That's hot. that's hot. No. You wouldn't say that's hot. That's no. like my hottest photo. If, if I had a Tinder profile. This is very extra. Why did you need the sweat bag? No, like, why I'm, were you sweating? Was, I was shooting a commercial. I mean, Genus. I wouldn't ever dress like this. Yeah, it was for a, a, a brand with that uh, that sells sports and energy things. And it was it was for a game called Chennis. Did they pay you a lot? So much. Okay. So much money. That makes it money. so much better. You have no and idea. And your hair is very long. Thank are you going to grow it like oh, that? I thought you were going to say very nice. It's, well, it's, it's a lot. Alma, it's can, this is my hottest photo I've got. So I thought that <laughs> literally, if I had a Tinder profile, that this would be, be my profile picture. Do you not have picture. a Tinder? Are you no, not on Tinder? I'm not on it, but I, I might. I mean, what are, are you? Are you single? Have you been on Tinder? Before? No, I've been married for nine years. <laughs> That's not what Quite you told literally. me off air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you trouble. That's Shame, the thing. Shame, Leafy. <laughs> Trust Glenn. Oh, wow. He gave you uphill, though. He, he gave that fire right back to you. I love that. And knowing Glenn, trust him to come with a crutch, trying to act like a rugby player being injured, all macho and stuff. I, I second guess that injury. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, besides personalities and rugby players, one of my favorite interviews that you've done, that I've done as well, is with our super sport personalities. Because, man, do they have personality. And you have some very interesting stories of Victor as well as, who else? Nick Mallet. Oh, Nick, that's right. Oh, more, share, share. Oh, so you have to go to our YouTube channel mm -hmm. and go watch back the, the interviews that we did with Victor and Nick because 
Victor concedes or confesses yeah. um, that he might be a bit grayer than he looks on TV. Oh, that's right! And, and Nick Mallet um, proceeded to lift the lid on which of his colleagues enjoy the makeup chair the most. Because I don't know if you realize this, yeah, but when you watch the build ups on Saturday mm -hmm. of the guys here in studio, mm -hmm. they are wearing a full, a full glam up. Out here. Right, all, all the foundation, all the powder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they even get their hair is combed. Oh yeah, it's the whole thing, right? Yeah, so it's Absolutely. it's been good fun mm -hmm. to get to know them and and to let give them the space to just kind of tell us the other stuff. You know, not not so much opinion and analysis, just the personality. The personality. And Shimmy was good value oh. when you had him on. As Shimmy well. had so much to say about his um, colleagues. Yeah, he would, I think he's going to hire debt collector if everybody isn't careful. The way he's running after his money, mm, a little bit cautious. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let's take a look. Put your commentary to the test. Oh dear. I wanted to commentate on something very, very, very spectacular. Ladies and gentlemen, Anton Taylor. All right, well here we have one of the most exciting, riveting games of sport you will ever see. It is South African bowls. I believe the Australian behind is possibly drunk. We're not sure if they've been using doping, but as you can tell, the gentleman in sight. Wow, this is unbelievable. He's got off the eyesight. Have you ever seen something like that? Curling in, moving towards that bright yellow world. Oh my word, a narrow miss. Could that have taken South Africa into the lead? Get out the Xanax. Because I need to calm down and now the Australians in their distinct bright yellow, I believe they have tampered that ball as you can see from the way it's moving in. He's got the spotter to look at the work. Warner in the background is giving him, come on mate, come on you can get it. Yeah alright, we've beaten the South Africans. I think that's <laughs> a sheep there. No, this is the New Zealanders and still, it is actually South Africa I think in the yellow jersey. So I've mixed it up a little bit but this is as tight as you'll get. Wow, and now our next competitor stepping in is Mrs. Marjorie Clark from Bryanston. She has uh, uh, been training hard. There were rumors that she's been on, on uh, banned substances, but you can see from the power in that throw there, that is pre precise and all 60 years of her life been uh, put towards it. Still going on, the game can't stop, won't stop as you see my athletes in their prime. Goodness me, I'm Oh, wow, I'm almost going to fade from the tension. The spectators are passing out either from nerves or possibly old age, but that very well may have won it. Goodness me. Wow. <laughs> doesn't get better than that. Ooh. Doesn't get better than that. Ladies and gentlemen, Anton Taylor. Have you ever, have you ever heard a balls match being so exciting and riveting, riveting? <laughs> That's the one you can't do the normal. Come on, X. You're taking it too far now. Eh? Stop it. Now you're going to put for a real strap now. It's not the boss will hold for you. Honey, please don't do it again. Okay, okay. Don't. Okay. okay. <laughs> But the eggs are waiting here. Jeez. Bonnie, don't. Bonnie. Okay, I'm, I'm off. Actually, John, also get out the cart. I'm off. I'm not playing the shot till you both get out the cart. I'm off the cart. John, get out the cart. Oh, wow. Okay, so what yeah. was happening there and where were you? Now, we we're, were playing at the, at the Super Sports Shootout at Pearl Valley. Right. So it was myself, uh, Conrad Yankees, uh, uh, it was the Ryder Cup format. We were representing the Super Sport team. Yeah. And then the BCX team was John de Villiers and John Smith. And I think they'd won the game after nine holes. We, we had a, another bet, stupidly so. <laughs> then we'd lost the game. For then now it was entertainment time. <laughs> you know, that's when I said the guys take it too far. So on my shot, they, actually they should have showed my shot. It landed next on the green next to the hole. It was actually oh, wow, a, a, a good shot with my four iron. But yeah, that, that was them trying to be funny and trying to irritate me. But it was a brilliant shot under that sort of pressure with a the camera there. But I just knew every time I'd look up, John Smith was standing there. And you can hear, I think, Sim laughing. And yeah, laughing at the back. But I, I paid I paid them, you know, later on. I paid them later on the, in the, that, e that, that evening. I paid my money. Conrad Yankees hasn't paid his money. And just since, <laughs> since we're here, since we're here two years ago, it was actually myself and John that were partners. We played against Odwa 
and Loazi Mvovo, and I'm still waiting for my money up to this day. Oh, wow. So they owe me a lot of money. All right. So this is the Warren Brosnian commentator's challenge. Let's see if you can do better than he can. Let's see how you go. <laughs> You've given me WWE, I don't watch this, but anyway, Adi walks the big man all the way from uh, Benoni Boxburg. You can see that he's been in the gym a bit. Uh, a big guy. He has thrown a couple guys out the ring and uh, he's quite the entertainer, this man. He's an absolute legend as far as entertaining the crowd and working them up and getting them excited before the big fight is about to start. He will make the entrance and uh, he might do his trademark dive. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but it's just an amazing theatre. Um, the atmosphere in this arena is just electric right now. I cannot wait for this encounter to start between the Benoni boxer and his counterpart, who's going to come all the way down from Durban, KwaZulu Natal. Uh, he has uh, fought 15 fights. He's only lost 14, drew one, and he's had 17. 17, I don't quite even do the best right now, but that's because I'm looking at WWE and I'm not used to it. But out he comes. This is the strong man from that is brilliant. KwaZulu Natal. I love Warren wow, Brosnian's wow. professionalism and persistence because he stuck with that even though he had no, no clue idea. what he was absolutely, doing. Absolutely. Flying so <laughs> blind. So, um, of course, don't fly blind into this weekend. There is plenty of Curry Cup action oh, yes, on. Indeed. We've got Australia against Argentina. And then the big, big match. Probably the biggest match of the year so far. Uh huh. It's the All Blacks hosting the Springboks in Wellington, New Zealand. The Caketon is sold out. It is a venue where South Africa beat them last year, 36-34. It was wow. really close. Yeah. Um, and we are, of course, uh, all very excited for that big game. Here at In Touch, we'd like to thank you uh, for joining our journey over the last two years. We are going on a bit of a production break. And this show will be back right here on the 12th of September. Between now and then, make sure that you keep following us at Supersport TV. Use the hashtag SA. Rugby and uh, go delve into our archives there on in, in YouTube. There's, yeah, there's a few good some ones, more highlights, absolutely some fantastic ones. Until we see you again in September, it's goodbye.